Kyler, you've been pretty tight-lipped throughout this whole process. However, when you did speak, you were crystal clear on your intentions on wanting to stay in Arizona. Why did you never waver from wanting to be a Cardinal? I mean, they're the ones who took a chance on me. Um, you know, understanding all the heat that they would have, you know, that they did take um, drafting a 5'10 quarterback. No one's ever done that. Um, you know, I understand that. Forever grateful for the opportunity they've, you know, given me. Um, and I love it here. You know, this is this is home. You know, besides Texas, this is home for me. Um, man, I've had a great three years so far. And for me, this is really just a start. You know, I feel like each year we've gotten better. All we've done is do this and um, look forward to continuing to do that over the you know, next couple of years. How much did your relationships with your head coach, Cliff Kingsbury, as well as your teammates play a role in you wanting to stay here? I mean, it's everything. Um, you know, Coach Kingsbury, he, he's like, you know, I've known him since high school, so that, that relationship there will forever always be, uh, you know, near and dear to me, um, along with building the relationships in the building, building relationships with uh, my teammates. Obviously, you know, this is the, you know, it's the league, so um, guys come and go, but, um, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's everything. You know, this game is something I've always loved to play. Um, it's a dream come true for me. And to be able to build all these relationships, the camaraderie, um, these, these are friendships and relationships that I'll have forever. So for me, it's, it was huge. You are very cards to the chest on social media. You've always been private. Yeah. <laughs> How would you like the public to know the type of leader you are? Um, you know, day, day one, um, in any new situation I've ever walked into, I've always been the guy that's, you know, wanted to prove myself before I, you know, ever step, stepped over any boundaries or said anything um, to anybody because I've always, you know, that was, that was always what was preached to me, you know. Um, I, how can I tell somebody what to do if I'm not doing my job? And that was, you know, that's, that was my mentality. I felt like over the years, obviously, you know, being a young guy, getting more comfortable, being around grown men, it's a new situation. But at the end of the day, I was built for it. You know, I was ready for it. Um, and like I said, all I feel like we, we've done is do this. And for that, um, you know, the the uh, being more comfortable, you know, that comes into play. And then, you know, so it's easy for me. You know, I'm a natural born leader. I feel like guys follow me naturally. Um, and you know, obviously, you know, sometimes. There's a place, there's, there's a time and a place to be raw rah in God's face and then there's a time to not be. But for me, man, I, I lead by example and, and, and the guys know that. We haven't had a chance to hear from you since learning about DeAndre Hopkins' six game suspension or the addition of your college teammate, your very good friend, Hollywood Brown. How do you see this new combination of offensive weapons playing out for you? Oh, it's a blessing uh, to be able to have that many weapons, you know, obviously. You can look at it one way as it's hard to get everybody the ball and make everybody happy, or you can look at it as, you know, it's, it's, it's a grateful and, um, like I said, a blessed situation to have all these guys around me. A lot of playmakers. Um, I feel like offensively we look completely different from when I first got here to now, um, which is, you know, it's, it, it helps me out a lot. You know, they believe in me to get guys around me and um, pour into me, you know what I'm saying? So um, to have Keys and, and, you know, Hop and Ertz and James and, Rondell and all the guys that we have, it's, uh, I feel like, you know, we were already explosive the past couple years. I feel like, you know, the next step is just to, you know, keep going up and take it to the next level. And with the guys around, uh, the guys that we have on offense, I feel like that's possible. You can see the excitement on your face. You're yeah. smiling even just yeah. naming all those weapons. Like I said, man, it's, it's just, I, I know, I feel like there's an untapped, um, that the potential of, of what we can be. It's exciting, and um, I, I think the guys know that. You know, I know our coaches know it. I just, you know, hopefully, um, with the reps and, and the time put together, I feel like you know it's all, all it's up to us to just go out there and execute. You are now the second highest-paid quarterback entering year four in the league. How do you start defining your legacy? I've always, as far as legacy goes, to me, it's about winning. Um, you know, obviously, I've done some you know great individual things, uh, some things that have never been done before, uh, which I definitely take pride in, uh, being the guy that nobody thought would be able to do the things that I've done um, so far in the league. Um, but for me, it's all about winning. Uh, nothing else, um, it's about winning. And you know, I think that's how everybody should be judged. You know, um, Obviously, the stats and stuff are cool, but for me, it's about winning Super Bowls. You know, if, I, if I don't win Super Bowls or if I don't win Super Bowl, um, I, I feel like it'll be not necessarily a failure, but uh, you know, that, that's that's my goal is to win championships. And if I don't get it, you know, if I don't, if I don't lead this organization to a championship, a multiple, then you know, I, I didn't I didn't fulfill my promise. That's how I see it. 